Hi, welcome to the Bowling Green Podcast. I'm joined by Louise, Jack and Rami, and I'm Connor. <laughs> We're just going to jump straight into the Khashoggi story again, yeah. following on from updates since last week. So, Rami, do you want to give the update? What's been going down? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> put me on the spot here. Well, um, your so top pick. <laughs> Saudi has come out and admitted that he was killed in the embassy, in the, yeah. in the consulate. They sort of got it teased out of them. So it's like, no, we didn't kill him. So it's like, oh, we tried to kidnap him and accidentally killed him. It's been like, it's like uh, he got well, in a fifteen-on-one yeah. fight and whoops. Uh, they've, they've changed their story like mm. three or four changed times since the actual killing, right? Yeah. Um, saying that, yeah, saying that they had nothing to do with it. Then it was a rogue hit squad. Mm-hmm. Then he got into a fight and was killed in the embassy. Mm-hmm. Now Trump that he has been murdered, the rogue hit squad. He he suggested both the rogue. Hit squad and the fight were mm-hmm. fair, um, sort of excuses as to what had, had actually happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but now, after the sort of like allies have con- um, helped them. Them. they're p- pulling out investments basically. Yeah. Oh, and they they're refuted, all friends and, yeah. they refuted the validity of those excuses. Condemned, they've condemned they've it. They've condemned it. Condemned they've condemned it. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> and uh, Trump has now said Trump, Trump has now said this morning that he's against he's against the reasons that the Saudis have put forward. So really, we've gone full circle. Yeah, um, we still don't. Know. At least it's been condemned. The Saudis need to explain themselves properly uh, because all they've done is harm through mm. not giving a proper explanation as to what's happened. Even more harm than already. And Turkey have now said that I think tomorrow they're going to lay bare. Everything that happened, mm. all of the information that they've got, they're going to yeah, announce it. Details, yeah. So, oh, so they think they they know everything. Yeah, yeah. Really? Well, they've got that. They the think re- they've got that recording that was Is off that of his Apple Watch. That was it, yeah. Um, and all the details. They had the cleaners. No, not the cleaners. They had oh, the yeah, inspection that, that went in. There um, was a, a group of cleaners yeah. though that were like photographed. Apparently, the walls had been paint like repainted, and they'd had it's cleaners in. So and, yeah, really very oh, shady. Very sus. I mean, a lot of sort of actually in Saudi Arabia, because this is, you know, obviously it's the murder of journalists in a horrible occurrence, but for them it's a pretty big PR gaff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's vile. <laughs> I haven't even tried it yet. I'm too scared. Sorry. Ja- Jack. Yeah. I have my coke here. <laughs> Jack and I were. Go on. Go on. <laughs> Jack and I were having a discussion before we came today, and. Um, just the, the the way that the Saudis handled it here it just seemed a bit off. Well, like really. what you shared with the uh, the whole King Salman, the actual king, rather than MBS. He's like MBS Salman. being MBS it being the crown prince of yeah, Saudi what's Arabia. His name? Mah- Mohammed bin Salman. Mohammed bin yeah, Salman. Yeah, so he's yeah. like King Salman's son. He's about thirty odd, and he's sort of taking control of the day to day runnings and foreign policy. It sounds like the king's in just a bubble, kind of. Yeah. He's from being fed like. That was what was that the, the article that you shared? But yeah, he just yeah. doesn't seem to know from what's going on, and he's living in some fairy world where he doesn't mm. get told anything bad that happens. Pretty scary, outside. isn't he? From what I could read, um, they've got the world's largest share of oil. Yeah. <laughs> from what I could read, uh, he was being fed information and told to watch Saudi TV. Mm-hmm. Um, from <laughs> he's the Trump treatment. <laughs> from um, MBS's. Um, AIDS and things like that. But what's interesting actually is the kind of the, the dynamic between the king and, and his son because the king has actually pushed back on a few of his son's policies yeah. um, openly, publicly, which has not really been done, in, in, uh, at least in Saudi anyway. So it's interesting to see the king take a stance and call for an investigation. Um, but we are seeing a, a firewall put up around the, the family itself. I mean, we've had 18 also, Saudi nationals now being arrested. Yeah, they're kind of taking the fall. Um, and, you know, aides and officials and prosecutors coming out and saying that the king and the prince and the family had no, no idea of, of this knowledge, which is, I guess, what we expected all along. Mm-hmm. Nobody's buying it, I don't think. I mean, who so would? If, if they don't, if they, if the royal family didn't do it, who, who did? Who did? Are you right, exactly. Advocate here yeah, but, um, saying like how ridiculous it is. There is yeah. nobody that could possibly have had that authority, right, no. to sanction it. In an so embassy as well. Yeah. Like so it must have been them. It must yeah. have been. It just seems a bit 
weird to go, well, we didn't know anything. I just... At all. Yeah, yeah and it has to well, have been... Who could have done it? I yeah. just think it'd be really interesting if the murder of a journalist is what brings down the Saudi monarchy after, you know, all of the rights violations yeah. and stuff yeah. they committed against yeah. I mean, their own citizens. They are struggling, aren't they? You know. Yeah, they're, they're really in a tight spot since the Arab Spring. Mohammed has come in, you know, promising reform and trying to move away from the the you know a ninety yeah. percent reliance or so on petroleum oil exports in the country, trying to push for um, an increase in employment of his own citizens because Saudi is predominantly made up of of foreign workers. Mm-hmm. Um, High youth unemployment. So this is really uh, yeah, gonna it kinda kind of reminds back. me of the Shah in Iran because he like tried to modernize um, in the what the nineteen sixties the whole white revolution thing, but doing so in an author authoritarian way. So like obviously there was the driving ban got overturned recently, yeah. and that was MBS. Who I guess now everyone's assuming ordered the the killing, but. Saudi women who've been like campaigning for years for equal rights are just sort of sneakily being arrested mm. or disappearing. Yeah. So it's like. Could you see this being the downfall of this Saudi regime then? Kind of. But yeah, like, what happens is. Uh, yeah, I don't I reckon don't it's going to be like a direct thing. No. It's going to be indirectly. It's going to. This is going to lead to some instability and then it's well, going to. Well, did you read Khashoggi's last column for the Washington Post? I haven't read it, but I heard it was pretty damning. Yeah, well, his whole thing that he was saying about was how the Arab world is so closed off from like free information. All of the TV channels, all of the information streams, even with the internet, are controlled by the state effectively. So So is the internet controlled in the country as well? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'd it's like, a, a great probably censorship. heavily censored. Yeah. Even though they've got an app, like this is a bit off topic, but one <laughs> of the articles I was reading about the alleged hit squad there's an Arabic app that you can use to like look up a phone number and see what name is attached to it. Oh, so you have to register like all yeah. these. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think isn't that something? Like lack of isn't anonymity. That, that's the same as in China, isn't it? That's what they're doing Probably. in China. They're, so yeah, it's all You have very to register sore. to use the internet, or they're they're going to do something like that. I'm yeah. pretty sure they've yeah. already done it. You have to register to use the internet. Can't use a VPN. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that that's it. Once once you're on, they know everything that you're doing. So. Not fantastic. So yeah, reading his last column, column kind of like. So at first I was like, why did they go for him, murder him so brazenly? You know, there's plenty of outspoken journalists who have like exiled themselves or gone into exile, but you know, the content of what he was saying might have been too real for them. Yeah, well, and that that article um, is pretty. Uh, coincidental that he's read an article on the safety of um, journalists and there being a lack of open mm. discourse mm. and then being killed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they somehow thought that killing Khashoggi was going to stop that article from being released, they were obviously... They've done a real Barbara Streisand effect. <laughs> okay. You heard of that? She I like think so, yeah. It's whenever you tell the internet to not do something, right. they're yeah. then going to do it even yeah. more. Or when you try, uh, when you murder a journalist, it's not going to stop his articles yeah. from being released. Like, how what's stupid? Especially if he's already written. Yeah. 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 And to go back to what you were saying, I, th- I think that the reason that this has been so much more impactful in the, on the international community than some of the violations within the Saudi mm-hmm. regime is because this was so brazen. Yeah. This was so. We don't. Fucking there were so many other ways that I'm sure they had access to doing it yeah, without totally. bringing the the blame on them. Yeah. So many other ways. I mean, it was definitely. I think in a way, it's it's, it's a like message, they isn't it? To send a message. Yeah, yeah it's saying that you know, we can do whatever we like, and you know, nothing's actually going to happen. So we can continue and it's kind to. It's kind of scary because, like, even though they've received pub- public condemnation from the West and everything, like, we're still really reliant on them. Yeah. <laughs> like Trump mm. even said about the because there's recently been a big U.S. Saudi arms deal. I think that's mm. going Hundred through. And something billion Mm -hmm. arms deal and he literally said it would be worse you know for us than them if we were to impose sanctions but again we had this conversation before to what ends does that argument hold up to what ends do we say it's going to be worse for us it's Mm -hmm. going to be worse for us they're killing journalists 
So the arms dealers then countries. selling, like US selling them loads of arms, yeah. basically. So, so yeah, why would they want to do that in the first place? Right, because it's money and because yeah. um, they have no money. Well, the argument yeah. is like, oh, if we don't sell them, then someone else, like Russia or China will. But we discussed yeah, this. Yeah, we had, yeah, we had this discussion last week. You then absolve yourself it's from... Yeah. yeah, you're not involved in that and you're yeah. not responsible for anything that then happens as a result of those arms being misused. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I think... And you can condemn foreign selling. governments yeah. for selling them arms to use us. Yeah, you kind of got a better leg to stand on. Yeah, I'll be really interested to see what Trump's reaction is now. It's like what, so let's see what Turkey say tomorrow. But what Trump's reaction will be after this mm. has happened? Because mm. he initially said that the consequences will be severe if something like that does happen, what, or if it comes out that Saudi were responsible. Well, you can't say that and then not do anything. Hmm. Well, I thought. I thought. The, sorry, I thought the arms deal was be. I thought Trump said something about that, like maybe not going through, or that it was like in um, jeopardy. The now. last thing I saw was that he, you know, he was like trying to stop that from being talked about. Okay. Yeah, saying, I, I, like, I it would be worse. It would be worse for us. Or we have to be careful. We didn't outright say like. Uh, okay. I think what he said We're was. Doing the arms. Arms deal get screwed. Oh, yeah. I think what he said was it'd be such a shame to throw a hundred mm -hmm. whatever billion arms deal down the drain. Mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. what. I mean, I think he's in a he's in a real tight spot here, um, considering how strong Congress is, kind of pushing for an investigation mm -hmm. and for there to be, um, you know, sanctions, obviously, and, and the fact that Trump, obviously, because of the the um, structure of. Um, Congress and the executive, um, he doesn't have influence over Congress like Theresa mm -hmm. May does, obviously with that fusion of powers between the legislature and the, and the executive. Theresa May can effectively call on all of our MPs to, to do whatever she likes within mm -hmm. kind of reason. Um, but Trump doesn't really have that luxury. Uh, America has always been very much about the local and the public focus you know, about your district, about your congressional people rather than about party lines, so to speak. Because at the end of the day, in America, it's so much more about being true to your local community to get reelected. That's mm. that's where the real issue lies in. So Congress doesn't really have to worry about patronage and kind of sucking up to Trump to to get so higher. Like, there's still plenty of that going on. There is still mm. plenty of it, but it's like Theresa May can obviously can obviously say to a backbencher, right, I'm going to make you a, a minister. That is, you know, for any MP that is a um, backbencher, that's always going to be yeah, the focus. But in the US, it's kind of even weirder because they can just bring anyone in to be like a, a secretary of state. They can, yeah, but at least um, in America, it, it's not as strong, I think, the power patching. So yeah. you don't have to do as much kind of sucking up. It's about experience and kind of it's more tactical. tactical, you know, the president's going to want tactical people on it on his team rather than kind of may it's less uh i'd say may has a lot more power than than her mps but in america i argue that members of congress actually have a lot more power than trump um so it's going to be interesting to see kind of how congress tries to deal with this and if trump is going to have to kind of come to an agreement and sacrifice yeah. Some of the deals that are, that are being put forward. Yeah. Yeah. He's not going to do that. He's not going to sacrifice the deal, really. No, well, I think he's there's going to be, there's gonna be immense pressure for him to. Yeah. <laughs> <It's too laughs> to I think there's going to be immense pressure for him to. I think if other countries in the West start to impose sanctions, mm -hmm. then it's the world's going to be looking to America to say, You do. Oh, what's your move? Yeah. yeah. And kind of going on from that, we, we can also then start to look at the kind of the more micro then and kind of say, Well, if this deal doesn't get through, you know, where you know where are these defense contractors based, then we can start looking at the districts, the kind of the members of Congress and things. That is going to be a real issue because obviously these workers are going to be the people voting for either the Democrat or the Republican. So mm -hmm. you've got yeah, you've got immense immense mm -hmm. issues, and yeah. with the midterm elections coming up next yeah. month, it's it's a real issue. It's a polarizing issue that's going to be very interesting to see unfold over the next couple of months, years and mm -hmm. see how Congress and, and the President do deal with it. Yeah. So do you think this is going to affect the midterms, really? I think for, for those I'm possibly sure. influenced by arms manufacturers... On the coast, probably. Yeah. But I think it depends on how the next week goes. America, it's a lot more local, mm. local issues. That's why Trump yeah. did so well in America first. 
So I did always think that foreign policy could be a tricky area for him. Well, this isn't th this policy isn't America first, is it? This no, like, exactly. not holding foreign governments to account. Mm -hmm. he, he's put himself in a well, yeah, he has. He's put himself in a, a an awful position because he's said all this stuff in the campaign and then almost done absolutely none of it since he's been in office. The rhetoric, I mean, I'm talking about the rhetoric mm -hmm. of yeah, yeah. America first and a more insular um, country. Yeah, and then. Because that gets votes, but he knew, like, Trump, for all, you know, he is a loud mouth and so orange, but he's not, like, a complete idiot. He's he knew he's orange. That I really don't get this. I don't think he looks that orange. It's the fact around the eyes, it's still pink. Uh -huh. There's, like, the little gap and then all the tan. Yeah. But anyway, he's Sorry. not a complete idiot. I think he realised he knew that you wouldn't be able to... Just go full on protectionism. Hmm. Yeah. No, but there's, I there's going. I genuinely think he was like, it'll be fine. He's kind of, he's still doing well. He still does rallies and stuff. So yeah, yeah. But anyone can it do rallies. Can't though, last you can find see the whole two thousand people correct, to support you. Yeah. Um, that's not representative of the US. Has he got the lowest uh, approval rating for after a hundred days? Or he had the lowest approval mm. rating after a hundred days know, of I any president. Yeah, yeah there are always would. mixed results on that depending on which yeah, which source you look at for where you get them. Because obviously, if you go to like maybe the Washington Post, yeah, you're going to get the lowest approval ratings. But if you look at another source that's maybe pro Republican or pro Trump kind of news sources, you're going to get high approval ratings. I think it was so. just I don't know who measures it out there, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm just saying I don't I don't think there's necessarily any. It was quite widely reported, of, but yeah, I mean the the approval ratings are taken into account of all other presidents. Yeah, um, so it's so Trump it's Trump ist to then turn around and say, well, fake news. Approval ratings, isn't it? Because then, well, nothing matters. Like that, yeah, but I don't. I don't think so. the approval rating does matter because it depends on where you ask, and you're never really going to get a good representative sample. I just don't think can, you are. Can try and find that. Yeah. Uh, at yeah, the, at the end of the day, approval, approval ratings. ratings. I, I, do, I do agree with Connor. They, they they don't really mean anything. What really matters yeah, is the midterms and the next election. And historically, looking back at the statistics. Midterms are usually a check on the president's performance, and we do usually see a shift from uh, Congress shifting from the party of the president to the party of the opposition. Yeah. Is that going to happen this year? I don't know. Yeah, but I think a, it it's definitely a discussion for another time because looking at the seats in contention, it's going to be very difficult for the Democrats, in my opinion. But I'm, that's yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how it's going to end up because I, I have a feeling that like. Trump supporters are going to come out big time and, and get on, on board with voting Republican, but I feel like Democrats, just in general, are going to be way more organised because yeah. they realise they really fucked up last time. I think certain segments yeah. of so the Democratic Party be will be. Say that again, sorry. I think certain segments of the Democratic Party will be. I think the classic um, establishment Democrats are in trouble because... Yeah, no, it's definitely going to be a swing to the left. For sure. And you can see a lot of these social democracy type Democrats getting massive... Um, approval in, in but places yeah, where they're standing. Or, or, or what's her name? Uh, Alexandra Ocasio. Yeah, Alexandra, yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the, the issue She's is, is for, for the Democrats, the, the margin of safety is, is, is very slim. The actual well, seats they need to win is going to be very slim, so they've got to really make sure that they take so a strong Trump's, hold. Sorry, I've just got this website that has Trump's approval rating like mapped for the entire year. He's pretty like a good fairly even split 52 percent disapprove 42 percent approve okay what source is that uh this is 538 oh okay yeah done by abc i don't know how but then you can see changes. some other ones here can't you yeah give me a second just to yeah i don't know it's strange and you're right you know yeah. I mean, a lot of this stuff mm -hmm. i mean i think <laughs> but damn obama what what, good? Bad? Mm, he's... It went down a lot, let's say that much. <laughs> well, that's, I think that's, that's, that's the way American... Yeah, I mean, that's the way American politics yeah, works, isn't it? They all get elected by yeah. talking bullshit, George Bush. and then afterwards, when they don't deliver, everyone goes, well, now we're getting rid of you. Okay. That's Trump's the way that it always Trump's works in, in all yeah. places. You go, let's try left, let's yeah. try right, Trump let's try left, still, let's try right. Trump is still under you know, quite a few recent presidents. Crosses over with Jimmy Carter. So it's like Jimmy Carr then. <laughs> he's comparing his to yeah George Bush massive spike on 9/11, and mm. then it's just like down from there. But that is the issue with with the 
presidential system is that the president doesn't have much power, in my opinion, anyway, in, in America. I think if we go back to... I think they do, though. The they might not have the, you know, the institutional power or, like, the... What is it called? There's three different types of, of authority, right? So I forget what Weber on the guy. But... There's a huge, a much bigger sort of personality and face of the nation element. It depends. Charismatic authority. Mm. It depends yeah, who you see him as. You know, do you see him as the commander in chief or the unity in chief? Mm. I mean, that's definitely a discussion for another day. Presidential power because it's one we could talk yeah. for hours about. <laughs> yeah. But um, we've already been going for going, quite a while on that. Going back to the Khashoggi case and, and to Jack's point, I think Trump has got a very difficult decision to make. He's got to go all the way, or he's gonna, you know, face uh, face a big hit, and then potentially that damaging the Repub uh, Republicans in, in the midterms. Trump basically, in an ideal situation, needs to now, you know, condemn them massively and sanction them, sure. which is yeah. going to cost Trump a lot and going to cost America billions. Will it? Will it Trump cost Trump to? a lot though? Because if he wants to keep up that sort of strong America first image, it looks good for him, doesn't yeah. it? If he's like, mm -hmm. no, I'm, I'm doing That's it for but, 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 but the economy crash yeah. doesn't look so good. Mm. Jobs are always going to be the most important thing uh, of the agenda, and it, if it's Trump loses the jobs, then, then um, that's going to be the issue, isn't it? Let's not forget that this is a man who praised a fellow, or praised a fellow Republican for oh, assaulting yeah. a, a journalist. Yeah. yeah, who praised him. Yeah. What was this for doing that? Do you remember uh, when Greg, I can't remember his last name, who was a Republican, was a Republican like senator, senator right? yeah. and what a uh, reporter was asking him a question. A Guardian reporter. A Guardian yes. reporter, and he didn't like the question, I can't remember what the question was, and he body slammed the guy. Yeah. And got community Locked service, and, um, and Trump said that oh, any, guy, yeah, Trump, any guy that... Uh, Trump's not got the re best record on journalists. <laughs> yeah, but he, he said any guy Sorry. that can body slam somebody like that, or any guy that body slam somebody like that is my guy. <laughs> I mean, like, right, funny, but also horrific. No, I'm yeah. not, I'm not yeah. funny, like, ha, ha, that's funny that you can do that. I'm just saying, like, that's it's ridiculous. That, that, that whole situation that. happens, yeah. 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 So he's not got the best record yeah. on protecting well, journalistic is, freedoms. Neither is no. Turkey, though, and they... What do you guys think about no, but they're capitalising on this? Because it's Saudi Arabia. Yeah. 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 And because of the whole issue, you know, surrounding Saudi and, and that group disavowing from... from Qatar and things like that, of course, I think Turkey's obviously going to try and use this. Yeah. Because they've been... Turkey are allied with Yemen, aren't they? Uh, with Qatar. Turkey, they also Turkey are basically, they're, you know, I don't know, if they, Whichever way they the are a big, a big, uh, Turkey's kind of a weird one, because it went secular after the First World War, and then it's just slowly been getting more Islamist, but it's more the kind of, you know, Muslim Brotherhood sort of not populist as maybe and then Saudi Arabia just a bit more family mm. yeah. strict the harder the and, it, and it's difficult because obviously America is allies with both Turkey and Saudi mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Trump again might have to make a yeah. decision well he's, he's going to have to yeah. he can't just ignore it no um, so it will be interesting I mean we'll keep following this over yeah. the next week I, mean, I, think, so. I personally don't think it would have been such a big issue for Trump if Trump hadn't been such a strong climate change denier either because he would have been promoting like renewables and whatever and he wouldn't be as reliant yeah. on the oil. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the way he, he could have spun it. He to reopen the US coal mines. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he, he could have spun that quite easily. I think he would have done very well if he'd done that. If he said, right, mm -hmm. um, renewable energy is going to be uh, at the front of our you know national security policy now, driven billions into that, creating jobs around that, whilst kind of evening out the jobs lost in the air. I, I, I think, think he could have played that very well. It would be a big risk, though. I think, to be honest, a lot of world leaders are counting on this sort of, you know, we'll condemn it and eventually it will blow over. Yeah, because they don't want to take Everyone big steps. Everyone knows the Saudis did 9-11, but they're not going to, like, you know, sorry to bring up 9-11. <laughs> You know, but but it is it's it's them it's weak leadership in my opinion. It's weak leadership, mm. Mm. Um, and if they didn't have so many vested interests in uh, the oil industry, then it wouldn't be as difficult, yeah. or the arms industry, it wouldn't yeah. be as difficult to condemn it. Yeah, but they do, and they've put themselves in this position, and now they're being presented with the choice. Yeah, um, yeah. and it's not something that we it's should what forget. The no decision is not something we should well. forget. Yeah, right, should we talk about Brexit? Brexit. Oh boy. Brexit. <laughs> okay.
So I have just, have just come back this morning, just got the train back from attending the uh, March for the People's Vote. It was fantastic. If you went mm -hmm. out, good on you. Um, 700,000 people, the largest demonstration for a decade. I wonder why you keep looking at me, Jack. Because uh, I'm about to ask you what you think of it. <laughs> and it was, it was a fantastic event. There were some really good speakers, some really influential speakers. Um, and hopefully this now leads to a wider discussion mm -hmm. on having a second vote, a vote on the final deal. Um, on the final Brexit deal. This is the first time we've spoken about Brexit, so. Yeah, it's yeah, quite true, impressive. Actually. Yeah, we've been holding back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but there's only so long we can go after yeah, something like Brexit. It's like that, that uh, rule that if you have a discussion with somebody, at some point somebody will call somebody Hitler. Yeah. Um, oh no, it's, it's any argument eventually devolves into talking about the Nazis. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. Any way. That, is, that has now become Brexit. There's something law. There's something yeah, law. Murphy's law. Is it Murphy's law? I thought Murphy's law was if it can go on. Wrong. Wrong. It will go wrong. Um, like, okay, I can't remember. Yeah. What it's I know. What, yeah, I know what you. Yeah. yeah. But that is now about Brexit. It's yeah. Only so many conversations can occur about talking yeah. about Brexit. So I want to know what you guys think about a second a vote or a vote on the final deal. I think um, it's pathetic, personally. I know that's going to piss off a lot of people, but I just think it's ridiculous. What's your desired outcome? So, for example, like as someone who wants the second vote, I don't know about you two. Do you want the second vote? Uh, I would. Yeah, I want. <laughs> I would like to have not voted so we have left the European Union uh, in 2016. Did you vote? No, hang on, yeah, hang on. You I voted, voted, you voted to, to stay. Voted to yeah, I voted the way to you worded it. that made it sound like you said, I'd like to have changed my vote then. Oh, no, no. You, you wouldn't have wanted a <laughs> referendum in the first place. Yeah, I don't think, I don't, I think referendums are the tools of, you know, demagogues. I, really? I think it shouldn't have. Yeah, I mean. Look at Switzerland. Don't you have referendums uh, all the time? Well, look it's, the at whole yeah. it's, it's the whole direct versus representative argument. Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah, Switzerland, maybe, because that's in their political culture. Mm. But we've always been a representative democracy, you know, for like the founders of parliamentary democracy, right? So you think the so MPs should have. I had think that the MPs abdicated responsibility and on such a complex issue as well, which, like, we did the. Uh, yeah. Europe course last year. I still barely understand. Yep. It. Same, but so, I, I, I don't think that. I, I think more referendums are the way to go, personally. Mm. So, do you want me to so, so what about the second, vote? A second yeah. vote? Would make second sense. Vote? No, Why because not? we've already had the vote. So, if, for example, you have the second vote and we reject the deal, well, then we're just going to not leave. We've already. Yeah. We're, we're it's still going to leave, though. It's not going to happen. No, no. So, so, let me pitch my. Go on, then. Yeah, let yeah. me yeah, do yeah. For, for a second Paint referendum. I'm going to get really so, heated with this. That's fine. <laughs> so, we had a referendum mm. that was called by David Cameron. Mm -hmm. to get the Tories back into power. Do yeah. we agree on that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it was a political ploy. It was also this. to like stop the UKIP hassle yeah. them and so it's basically to But there was a vote that it was a vote that the people that organized the vote didn't want to have in the first place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We then had the referendum. Nobody, nobody in this country was qualified to vote in that referendum. I think we can look back now. Oh, and so maybe say like Mike Manor. Yeah. No, but no, really. <laughs> one person. Yeah, but with or, that, or, no one's qualified I to vote in any election. Right, really, but, but especially they? not this one. Um, n not only that, the people that, on, and this happened on both sides, but mm. predominantly on the Leave side, lied about what would happen yeah, afterwards. They lied leave. about how we would leave. They were. They lied about the effect, what the effects of leaving were. And then the day after the election, went back on the promises that they made during the referendum. So people voted on lies. People voted both ways yeah, on lies. But yeah. let, hold on, let me finish my, my, my argument for the second vote. Nobody voted either for the position that we're in now. Uh, negotiations going completely wrong. All of the uh, issues that have been brought up by the negotiations that we never had any idea about during the referendum. Things like the Irish border, things like trade agreements, how long it's going to take to renegotiate trade agreements what's going to happen with freedom of movement, all of these food, medicine, all of these things that we had no idea about before the referendum. So I think that it would only be fair to have a, a vote on the final deal, the deal that gets brought back by Theresa May and the neg yeah. negotiating yeah. team from Brussels, a vote on that deal, whether to ignore that deal and just cut away from the EU, so to have a no-deal Brexit, yeah. or to remain. I think that those should be the three options on the on the ballot. Okay. So checkers, no deal. Will yeah. Remain. Checkers okay. or yeah. whatever deal they yeah. come back with, no deal will remain. Yeah. 
And it that should be a lot clearer than you know the binary mm -hmm. yes no question that you're doing. But what would so this would be another referendum, mm -hmm. not just Parliament having a, a final say. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because yeah, I just <sighs> because there's so much political game playing okay, in so in Parliament. If we have the vote again, and we then say again, slim majority and and leave win. You're still gonna just accept that. Yeah. Okay. It's just because I just find it very odd that you don't accept the fact that we want to leave already. Well, majority but because, left. because the vote was a shambles. Because the vote was undemocratic. It wasn't because undemocratic. It was un was I would it say undemocratic. It was the lies that were told. It doesn't matter. Lies are told during every election. But no, campaign. it wasn't. It was. It was. Every it wasn't just. Campaign. No, because there's manifestos. There's yeah. something to hold these people to account to. Yeah. When a government goes in and they've got a manifesto, you can say you're not enacting this in your manif that was in your manifesto, or you've completely gone against what happened in your manifesto. Now. Yeah, but we don't then or call the another election to say right. So now that you've not done that, we need to just get rid of you and start again, because otherwise yeah. we would have got rid of like the Lib Dems as soon as they brought up like yeah, tuition fees. Like they well, specifically said, we're not going to do it. We're going to promise to keep tuition fees down, and probably a whole host of other parties. That was in a, that was in a coalition. And we, I, I yeah. don't agree with the Lib Dems, but yeah, that was but in a coalition. Either way, we, loads of parties have said we're gonna do this and then not done it. And we haven't yeah, then the held them to I account which is, but we do hold them to account because that's what we that's what regular election elections are. Yeah. During the next every, election. Only during the next election. Yeah but at least the there's a guarantee time. that you still get on. I think it's important to remember as well that the people who, you know, championed the Leave Vote Farage Johnson, Gove, like, they're nowhere to be found. David Davis. David Davis telling us how much of a better job he could have done when he was in the post for about a Liam what, Fox, a year who said half. that the Brexit trade deal was going to be the easiest trade deal in all of human history. Like, that it's, is, that it's is a lot such harder a lie. To hold them to account, it is, it's it? unreal. It's, that is such a lie. I don't necessarily think it's a lie. I don't think they're purposefully well, lying. It, it was a lie, wasn't it? Yeah, but it was, but it's, it it's a lie in hindsight. I don't think they were sat there I thinking, think we're going to lie about knew. this and tell the public this would be really easy. And really? It's not. It didn't yeah. suit Nigel Farage's purposes to say things like, we will stay inside the customs union, we'll stay inside the single market. Yeah, but that's because I think they genuinely thought and then the day after they the could election, do that. The changed. day after the election, he then said, we're not going to stay inside the single market, we're not going to stay inside and the customs union. why is he union. making the rules? <laughs> Yeah, but he wasn't. That's the thing. No one's yeah, listened to him. Right. No one, other than during the election, fine, or campaign or whatever, mm -hmm. but no one in Parliament's looking to him going, well, he said this, so we have to do what he's... No one's doing that. But people Because voted. he's relevant. But that's yeah. what he's, people voted He's not voted relevant for, in the agency of Brexit, though. No, but then you're saying that everyone's listening to people and they haven't got a, their own choice. They had the ability and the agency to listen to a variety of people and they chose based on who they they believed most. But even the people that were campaigning for Remain didn't know what leaving the EU was going to entail. Mm. Mm. So was there was no, the there was no, point. nobody could have known. Yeah. Unless, you'd been, unless, you'd unless you'd been in Brussels unless you'd, and you'd been negotiating trade deals your whole life yeah. and you knew exactly what these things entailed, that was the only way that you would have known all the repercussions for what was mm. going to happen. No, because no one would have known because it's never been done properly. Before. But they have knowledge of the laws and the rules. And they could make a better prediction than anyone else. Yeah, and, ev and as you say, because... even then, but as you say, even yeah. they, people that have been working in this their whole lives, still didn't know enough. Yeah. So yeah. the British people never were going to, which is why we should have the, the the choice to change our mind and to, to vote on the final. No, deal. because you're saying that in the first one they didn't have the knowledge, but in the second one they magically have the knowledge to uh, vote. We know way more now than we did then. I don't. I think you're way too optimistic about. Well, seven hundred thousand people. people know enough to march mm. on London That's from all over the no, country. No, I completely disagree. I think that they are choosing to do that because they've been. Like talking to friends who think they know what they're talking about. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. It's irrelevant if they do or not. Saying that, oh, well, 700,000 people do know now, so we have to listen to them is not an answer. No, 700,000 people yeah. have the knowledge or have the feeling that whatever Brexit deal goes through is going to be worse than the position that we're currently in. Whatever happens, yeah, but they it's going to be that, that they bad. Don't know that. The, but we still don't know. We do know that. We do know that. Don't know we how don't know that. Other no, I disagree. We still don't know. Trade organization trading rules. Like, Say that again, sorry. Look at other countries that are on World Trade Organization trading rules, which are what is what we're going to be on if it's a no deal, and it kind of looks like it's going to be a no deal at the moment. You know, if we don't get our shit together, like it's just. 
the fact that people are still arguing that we're going to be more prosperous and better off outside the EU is just, you know... It's you, ignorance. You can want to leave for other reasons, but don't pretend that that is one mm-hmm. of them. Yeah. No, see, I'm not. I'm not trusting people who say that either, because mm. I don't. I don't think that's 100% the case, because everyone lies about their position. So saying that, oh well, people who want to remain magically know more and are, are better qualified, I, I still think, think is not that. necessarily true. The there are people there. You know, everyone knows a bit more now, and a lot of people have changed their minds. No, I still think that's not true. I still think it's that Only some people. Out, no, some vote. people. Some people know more. And then they're the ones calling for the second vote. The people, people who disagreed about, the people who voted mm. for Remain, and the people who now know more, which aren't that many. The average everyday person isn't going to be like, oh, I now know loads about the EU, because even us doing a course think, about the EU still don't know how the EU works, and I that's like, that that's studying about it. So people who are just getting on with their jobs and not studying about it are just watching news sources mm. or reading some articles on like the guardian they don't know what the fuck they're talking about yeah. and i'm not saying that's a bad thing i'm saying that there's too much information for them to process so giving the option again in your case like you're saying that the, the first referendum people didn't know what they're talking mm. about saying that everyone's now magically educated themselves is, i haven't said that everybody is magically educated no you're saying Probably some not. people have and the people who are going to vote to cancel the deal are the I ones that get the choice that no no everybody gets the choice yeah, everyone gets, gets the, the choice. choice on something that oh, is yeah. going to affect us for the rest of our lives that we yeah. had absolutely no idea as to what we were voting about it wasn't just people that want to remain at this march there were people that are in support yeah, of, of brexit that are upset at the way that brexit is happening yeah, no, be there's a people that farce. There's people that voted Leave that have now changed their minds. This isn't just people wanting to stop Brexit. This is people wanting to to hold the politicians in power to account, to say that they have made a shambles of this Mm. and we want to change our minds. Or we want the the ability to have a vote on the final deal. So how do you want the vote to go? Like, uh, not as in the results, I mean, like, the questions. Is it going to be, like, do you agree with the deal, yes or no? No, yeah. You want the three options? Yeah. That's what I would suggest. I don't know, there might be better ways of doing it, Yeah. but that's what that's what came to my head initially to, to do. Yeah. And it's been endorsed by Labour MPs, by Tory MPs, by Green MPs, by Lib Dems, by the SNP. Oh, no, I don't doubt it's been it, endorsed yeah. by a lot of people. I just it's, think it's the starting. argument that everyone didn't know what they were talking about in the first election, so they're going to know now. We know I more now. I don't think it's, it's as much really even not. that we know, we know more now, it's more... We realise yeah, how little we knew. And, you yeah, know, it's like but it's not going to work like that. It's going to end up working. It. It's going to end up working in the sense that we don't like how the the deal has gone or the negotiating has gone. So we now want to backtrack, which I why, just think. Why, would, why can't we do that? David Davis said right. in 2012, a country ceases to be a democracy when it loses the ability to change its mind. Yeah. David Davis said that. And I think we should be able to have the ability to change our mind, but we've all agreed to just do something, and now we're going to go, well, we haven't even done it yet, but we're going to change our mind. We didn't now. agree to do it. It was a, The referendum was about public consensus. It yeah. wasn't legally binding that the referendum yeah. went not through. Yeah. But the majority of people did want to do it. So, well, The slim majority of people. Still the majority. So then we should enact that straight away like we did with article 50 well, or just we should put article 50 yeah. through without knowing what the fuck it means whatsoever yeah, but again if you're gonna go we didn't know what it means again no one had done article 50 before so we couldn't right but known. we didn't have to enact it straight away we could have which we didn't we did there pretty was much a bit of a mad it, was, rush. it wasn't straight away it was it was, it was we're what enacting was it? this and March, that's it in march 2017 i think yeah like a year after the referendum yeah, yeah. A year well, after the referendum. In, in like, terms of what this is going to entail, that is very quick. you got to remember, there was the no whole learning. summer was like taken up with just no one really knowing what was going on. Yeah. Negotiations didn't start till. And then we had the so general much. election. Yeah, then there was a general election. When was that election? 2017. That was 2017. Yeah, that was last year as well, yeah. I, I think the biggest issue surrounding what has happened since the vote is the uncertainty. I, I think I can, I can definitely... Um, I can see why people are annoyed, and and this is one of the main reasons why I didn't want a vote and and voted to remain because of the uncertainty. Nobody likes uncertainty. Um, Economists don't like it, you know, hedge funds and all that, because people want a sure thing. They want to be confident that the direction the country is going in 
is one that you know we can protect and we can we can foresee in the future but nobody really does know what's going to happen tomorrow or in a week's time or in a month's time i think that's the biggest issue or in 10 years or in yeah. 50 years yeah. what this is going to mean I, I think that's the biggest issue surrounding this and i think even if you don't know a thing about brexit for example i haven't been following brexit for a year or so but i know that there's been a lot of uncertainty and you know we're not actually getting a lot done and i think the majority of people in the uk i think have some understanding that it isn't going quite as clear cut and simple as kind of everybody thought it would be. I think that's kind of, that's the angle I look at it. Whether there should be another vote, I'm not sure. I don't know if I have a strong opinion for either or, but it, it, it's, I can see why people would want, want a second opinion and a second vote. I think if, with the knowledge, and I, I disagree with you, Connor, I think mm -hmm. that we do have the knowledge to say that however this goes, it's going to be bad. It's going to be worse than the position we're in now. With that knowledge, why on earth would we not try to put a stop to it, or at least try to have some more control over it, try to slow it down? Theresa May extending the negotiation period for a year, the transition period for Surely a year. you think that's a good thing? But, but all she's doing is buying her time because she knows how stupid it is, sh stupid it is the decision you is You're surely me. giving yeah, herself more time to get a road. better deal and to negotiate better options for the country is better than rushing it through, which is a minute ago what you were complaining about, that we were rushing everything through. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that in a year's time, magically, we're going to find some solution to this problem and it's all going to be okay. No. Like, that's not what that means. No, of course the not. The EU aren't going to It means budge. there's a potential for that, though. If you don't have that at all, you don't get that option. No, because but what, you, extended what, it, what we should have is the option to say, we don't want a deal, we don't want this deal, we want no deal, or we want to remain, we want to backtrack on our decision, we want to change our mind. Not let's just keep extending it, extending it, extending it, and this Brexit, um, these Brexit negotiations go on forever. Yeah. yeah, but they're not going to go on forever, obviously. But, but it's still quite a lot. We're going to be bogged down with them, and this is my whole problem with the referendum in the first place. Like, is it that if we haven't got enough national issues mm -hmm. going on that have really little to do with the EU, and are now just you know, every time the you know negotiation period gets kicked down the road those issues get kicked down the mm -hmm. road with it and they're going to continue to be put on the back burner yeah, because of dealing with the, the, the well. implications of brexit mm. i think the eu was the least of our problems mm. definitely yeah. we needed to to look in to ourselves first but yeah i think know, it's easy reflection. to say that now yeah yeah with hindsight it is which is why i'm for a second vote Nice. I just don't, I don't think it's a good <laughs> we idea. We got nowhere with that, but yeah. at least we will voice our opinion. So what yeah. is the answer then to this? I think we should see what the deal is going to be, and I think that there will be, if we go, well, that deal's really shit, there will be an, a public outpouring for a second vote, not the one that's just happened. It'd be too late. How, how would it be too late? Because we're if, gonna, we're they, if we take a deal, deal back, back yeah. and Parliament vote on it, yeah. and it gets voted down, yeah. that doesn't stop Article 50. That doesn't stop no, the period of referendum. Time. Towards Brexit Day. Yeah, but nor does it a does. referendum. No, because as you said, the first referendum not legally binding. So if we have a, another referendum saying, do you think this is a good idea or a bad idea? Yeah, but the like precedent, three options, for example. The precedent has been set though, even though the first one wasn't legally binding. Matter. The fact that that's been taken. It, it doesn't matter if it's a precedent or not. Yeah, they they can it, still go. It it's not legal. Does. We're still going through with it. They're okay, not going through, are they? Depends how it goes. It depends. It really depends how it goes through. This is the thing with norms though. They're not. They're not as clear cut. It's like when Tony Blair, you know, asked for Parliament's permission to uh, invade Iraq. Maybe it's bad example to bring up, but that is a precedent that has been set. And now, no, no PM would dream of declaring war. I don't think without no. first yeah, political suicide. Yeah. Not really. So I think equally, they would not say, "Oh, this one, we're going to carry out an exact," but this one. Yeah, but they yeah, still yeah. actually can do that. I'm not saying they will, I'm just saying yeah. that is a thing. Oh, yeah, that's the, 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 the likelihood could, of that happening is very, very slim. Very yeah, again, it really slim. depends. The military could also launch a coup and we could become a police state, but I don't there's think a lot of likely. possibilities. Right, exactly. Yeah, there are lots of possibilities, but the likelihood yeah. of there being a second vote and then the government going, oh, no, we're not going to do it. Well, only if, if the second really vote wins for not doing Brexit at all. The only reason yeah. they'd do that is if they were secretly hoping for public outpouring. I feel the thing like is, Theresa May doesn't want Brexit, does I she? I feel like so. Theresa May is just kamikaze her whole like premiership. Well, the, the, all her premiership is going to be remembered for is Brexit. Mm -hmm. all, yeah. this, all the modern Tory yeah. party is going to be remembered for yeah. is Brexit. Whether that be Cameron or May or Johnson or Davis, mm -hmm. whoever, whoever it is. 
that this is what the Tory party will be remembered for now. And it's going to ruin them. If it goes through and Brexit isn't stopped, this will ruin the Tory party for years. Because the effects that Brexit are going to have on this country are going to be so catastrophic. And I know you I don't really, necessarily yeah, I really don't agree, agree with that. I don't that, think it's going to be You can't the ignore the, the facts. You can't ignore the facts. And but we don't know the facts. You've just do. said we don't know. You don't know because it hasn't happened yet. We and do we can know. predict yeah, we can things make... that can happen. And if well, you look very at specific sources, predictions. Okay. It's not just yeah. plucking predictions out of the air. I it's people, experts, that have worked yeah. in these industries for years who, who are saying yeah. the, these, the effects of Brexit are going to be huge. The stockpiling of medicines, the imports, imports and exports, the border in Northern Ireland, yeah. um, all of these questions that are being raised, business is not being able to do business because they're not going to have the parts or they're not going to have the staff or whatever. And I just don't think that's going to happen. I just don't think that that's going to happen. I don't think that on the day that we leave, whatever the date is going to be, that we're just going to be like, oh shit, we can't buy anything abroad now. We can't move. I don't think that's going to be. It's just going to be more difficult and more expensive. Yeah, Yeah, so why would you inflict that on yourself? And businesses aren't going to be able to cope. What? No, I it's just don't not think like it's, it's going to be the end of the world. I really don't think it's going to be as bad as you guys and whatever anyone else is predicting. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be that's the end of everything. But at least we have some kind of information or explanation to back what we're saying up. Just saying it's not going to be that bad. That's the, what the Brexit yeah, is. There are saying. other people who are saying that as well. There are other like experts not, who are saying that it's actually who? not going to be that bad. I think Dyson is one of them. He's like, just get on with it. Yeah, but it's it's I, not going to be that yeah, bad. He can't Massive wait for business the tax business. Break. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's excited How about. How much business does James yes. Dyson do with the EU? I, I don't know. I don't know where he buys his parts from, but I'm. Mm. Well, I don't who think it's probably hoodies? England. Mm. So. But I just don't. I don't think that we're going to leave the EU and then in a week's time we're all going to be running out of food. That's not going to happen. Not in a week's time, but yeah, but not food, even in a month's food. time. In a year's time, we're it's not just going to yeah. run out of food. We're not going to run out of medicine. The the whole stockpiling and everything and nothing is going to society is not going to break down no. overnight for sure. But no, but not even over weeks. Food prices yes, rising. Yes, mm. We years. might not run out of food. But food prices rising, cost of living rising, opportunities closing in, that's going to cause mass social discontent. Yeah. Yeah, as if that hasn't happened for the last yeah, 20, 20, 30 years. Why, why make it worse? We have free trade. We have trade. relative consensus for the last, I don't know, since World War II we've been living in peacetime. Yeah, and I think the issue is we have free trade at the moment, which is brilliant. We do a lot of our business in the EU. If we come out of that, we we have to import a lot, you know. We're like Japan; that yeah. there's not a lot that we can produce ourselves to sustain ourselves. So, um, you know, businesses have to import oil and things like that for everything from plastic to medicine to trucks to everything. things. Yeah, everything. everything pretty much. So we're gonna get we're gonna get cost pushed inflation. Inflation then means we're gonna we're gonna have unemployment rise, which is you know it's a very wages are gonna decrease. Yeah, it's a very easy way of looking at it and because they've been just decreasing using decreasing for years. Yeah, already. We, you know. Um, that uh, if if you look at it simply by 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 just saying that we're going to have to stop paying more for things, then it, it is an issue because who wants to pay more for things? Because that means then our businesses are going to be producing at a higher cost, which means we're going to be less competitive with the rest of the world to China to a lot of countries in Africa now. So that that is the issue. I think we need to remain competitive, and especially as we have a strong financial service industry. I think it's important that we make sure that those rules and uh, the laws um, are protected, so that we can be certain that other countries can trust us to do, you know, their banking and the finance and things and their investments, which we have done so well on. Because I think this whole uncertainty thing, people don't like that, so they'd rather stay safe and go somewhere else that they know they're not going to have this political instability. I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No one likes a politically unstable country. No. Um, Not good trade partners. Uh, yeah, and, and I think that then I, I think that there needs to be at least an attempt to take back some control of I what's happening. Like. And, and but and and say that I mean and, and I know again I, you don't believe this, but if we if things are going to get harder, if things are going to get worse under Brexit, at least try. And, put, and, and do something about it, not just sit back and let it happen, because that's how so many problems occur. Mm-hmm. 
but I don't think people are just sitting back and letting it happen. Like, I think people are wanting Brexit to work. There are people who actually want it to work. Yeah, I said from the beginning that if if we can get a good Brexit deal after the vote, and I said after the vote, I respect the vote. I've never once said I don't respect the vote. I think that Brexiteers are morons and they're all racist and don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. I want a good Brexit deal. I want a Brexit deal that's going to make this country better, that's going to make us richer, that's going to give us more control over all aspects of our lives. But it's obvious to me, and a lot of people now, that that isn't going to happen. And therefore, we should have a chance to put a stop to that. I just think, I don't think we can decide on that until we actually know what, what any kind of potential deal looks like, really. But then, and again, that's part of the problem. That's what Rami's talking about, mm. the um, uh, uncertainty with businesses, is that we've had what, almost two years now, mm. and we still don't know what a deal looks like. Not much clearer. It's completely unclear as to what a deal looks like. So that doesn't help businesses, it doesn't help workers, it doesn't help anybody hmm. prepare for what's going yeah. to happen. I mean, uh, I, th- I think it, it a, s- a second vote on the final details, you know, this is our final plan, I, I think it's, it's fair for both sides, because if it's fine, then, yeah, we push through. But I think at least it then gives people to analyze and really consider is it actually the best deal because you've got think tanks and big business federations <coughs> that can kind of analyze the deal and, and figure out is it in their best interest mm-hmm. i think um and then at least there's an option i know we have voted but yeah i, I mean there isn't just one vote on 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 on, on bills when they push through in parliament and things like that but there's a lot of procedures and committees committees they have to go through yeah. until there's a final the vote. Things get reviewed constantly. This is checks and balances yeah. in practice. So I don't, I don't see an issue with having a final vote because if people are happy then it's going to go through. That's I, kind don't, of I yeah. completely that's disagree true. with that. I don't think that's how it's going to work. I will vote well, for the Brexit, Brexit deal if the Brexit deal yeah, is better than the situation yeah. again, that we are in now. You are one of the people who is more aware. There are going to be loads of people who aren't but then necessarily never have aware. Votes by that no, but that's, 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 never that's what I'm votes. saying. People aren't aware, and they're just going to be like, "Well, I voted Remain last time. I still don't want Brexit. I still think it's stupid." Even though they, even though they may or may not know that a deal might be good, they'll just go, "Well, no," because I still think it's a bad idea. So they're still going to vote no. And that's fine. Yeah, but if you've just said like it's going to be a good thing, it's going to be beneficial to the country, you're going to vote it. But if it then gets defeated in a in a referendum, and we we're left with a deal. Or no deal in, in in a case like this where we, we vote to not take any deal and not leave, then we're worse off. So again, you're just going to be like, okay, well, will of the people. So I feel like introducing the no deal option in a referendum could be a bad idea. Yeah, but you, you in case. But then you go back to the case. drawing board on what the final deal is going to be, and you still have that mm. Brexit day but Yeah, and we can't and then stay we in still end up with a no deal. Forever. Right, we exactly. can't stay in negotiations. Um, yeah, you've got people now saying that they campaigned for a no deal. You've got Brexiteers saying they campaigned for a no deal. That is absolute bullshit. <laughs> Why? Because nobody campaigned mm. for a no deal. They campaigned for a no deal. Oh, I see what you mean. Sorry, I misunderstood what you meant. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. That is, it is bullshit, and people are lapping it up still. They're lapping it up. Uh, they, they, there has to be some kind of checks and balances on these mm. people because they are lunatics. They've Do you think unhinged. the MPs, the ones going through the deals, the, U- the like Euro MPs going through the deals, they're the ones who are the checks and balances, not the average everyday person. Who the those the people in Europe, the Europeans or us, the people that both. Are it needs to be both. Like they're the ones going through the deal. Liam deals. Fox. The people in like the European Parliament, they're going to be looking at the deal that's going to be working best for them, and like our MPs are going to be working for whatever works yeah. best for us. That's the thing. You're going to throw it to they're the people again. They're probably not going to find something the... that works better for us than the situation that we were already in. Yeah, but they they will. They'll just go right. Well, if we don't get a deal that works well for us, we'll just leave. Yeah, and then that's going to be worse for us. <laughs> but we don't know so because it's we like don't know catch. how it's going to So we work. just do it and we go, well, maybe can, it will yeah, be worse, maybe it won't be worse. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think we should. That's, that's crazy. It's, that's it's, so just, crazy. it's a big risk. That, that's the issue, I think. It's and, a huge and it's not risk. one that we can kind of easily go back on. We can't, yeah, it's impossible. Yeah, there's no back to you. Because like if, we, if we left and then Nigel Farage now is talking about another referendum in 20 years, to then join again, we'd have to join the Euro. Mm-hmm. We'd have to There'd be, be so fully into the whole European project. There would be no picking and choosing there. No more opt-outs. Yeah. It'd be, we'd be in on our knees. This is last 
So why, why, why would it be a bad strategy. thing? Why would that be a bad thing? Because if I don't want to join the Euro. So why do you want to be within the European Union? We're not within the Euro now. Great. Yeah, I know we're not now. Because we have we almost have a perfect a scenario. Yeah. Yeah. What, where we get to pick and choose all the rules? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's just stupid. Why you're either stupid? with the system or you're but, not. But you can't, not, you can't just not. be like, oh, we're actually going to be really special and not take all the rules. But we're the not the army. We that pi- is the reality. And we that's pi- basically yeah. what Brexit is. So still trying what's to the argue. point? So what's the point of being in there at all? If we're going to go, well, we're going to get all the benefits, but none of the things yeah. that we disagree with. That's like the great strategy. Yeah. It is, but I just think that's really disingenuous. I think yeah, that's being part of something, but not being part of something, really. So then we should... You're looking out for your interests. We should fall on our sword and say... Because it's disingenuous to, to have all the great benefits of the largest trade, single trading bloc in the history of the world, we should then say that is that's wrong. We're, we're taking advantage yeah. of you. Therefore, we'll leave. We'll make ourselves worse off. Really? Yeah, I think we should. Like, I just, I actually. I don't know if this is just. No, like, I, I think like with the things that we were talking the about Japanese with Khashoggi and, and you the, coming out. No, I, I think like that it's really disingenuous to say that we're only going to pick and choose certain rules and only things that benefit yeah. us. And to actually this take the moral the high ground does. and say like that. We were talking about taking a moral high ground earlier with the arms deal and stuff. I think we should do the exact same thing here. Yeah, but that, but that, the arms deal moral high strategy. ground has way, way less it impact still has on some this country. Yeah, than on this, this particular one. country. Yeah. But it's but only affecting a lot of other countries. Us being in the EU is. What, what us being in the EU is affecting lots of other countries. In not in the EU, but us leaving is going to affect a lot of other countries as well. But we should like, do it anyway. Yeah, we voted to leave. We should still leave. But you were, say, you were saying that instead of having the deal that we had in the EU, because where we had the, of the best yeah. of a lot of worlds, we should leave, do something that's going to make the whole country worse off for potentially. 50 years, 100 years. Still potentially. Jacob rees the biggest Brexiteer, said if we leave with a no deal, it could be 50 years before we see the benefits. But you want to... Believe that statement, but not believe other statements. Why would he lie about that? Why, why would, would he lie about anything? Why People would lie about loads of things? Yeah, That's a really why weird would Jacob Rees-Mogg, who has staked his whole life on leaving the EU, say that leaving the EU, we will not see the benefits of leaving <coughs> the EU for fifty years, when he is completely vested in leaving the EU? Why would he give an argument? I just against don't understand why you're believing that particular statement, but not believing other things that he's probably said about the EU being a good thing. He hasn't said anything about the EU being a good thing. No, as in leaving the. I bet bet he has. I don't believe that for a second. Because you're saying he's pro leaving the EU. You're saying he's never said anything. Jacob Rees-Mogg. Yeah, you're saying you just said he's pro leaving the EU. Mm -hmm. But you're saying that he's also never said anything good about leaving the EU. No, you said anything good about the EU. EU. Okay, well I meant leaving the EU. Yeah, I know. He yeah. said, ah, he's no, I know. Words. He said that one thing. I, I completely mm-hmm. agree with you. But I'm saying you're choosing to believe that. But if he's said other things about leaving the EU that are going to be positives, you're not going to. Yeah, I, but I it's, in that. His, it's in his interests to say that. No, I know you're not saying that directly, but that's what you're implying because you're saying like, oh, he's a big like EU like Brexiteer, mm-hmm. but you're not going to believe him when he campaigned to leave the EU. No, because it's clear now that a lot of the stuff that he said when leave the, campaigning to leave the EU was lies but you're going to believe him now that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to understand well, you don't have to just the... look at a person and say they've lied before so I'm never going to trust anything that they've said no I just find it a bit weird that you're choosing to believe him now about something that supports your right. idea that's, because, that's my point because why my, this is what I'm saying why would somebody that has is, is completely invested in leaving the EU make such a damning argument about leaving the EU the very thing that they've staked their whole career on I don't know because I don't know in what context because said it it's the truth. It must be the truth. Otherwise, why would well, he say it? Well, not necessarily, because I, I just don't think that that's the case, that he, he said it, so he must know everything about the entire situation. No, but it shows that his belief in, you know, his reasons for wanting to leave the EU aren't really based on the prosperity of, you know, It is the pure ideological it's blindness. It's ideological. If, if, if the, one of the biggest Brexiteers in the country has said... It doesn't even have to be true, like... It doesn't even have to be mm. that he's making a prediction that will come to pass, but it's the fact that he's okay with that being a, you know, a possibility yep. and saying it's still, you know, going to happen. Yeah, but this is the point still we've got to in this it. country. We've just lost a lot of pragmatism, okay? It, it's I feel like Tony Blair ruined pragmatism <laughs> by being too pragmatic, and now everyone's just like, ideological extremes. It's crazy. It's the only it, thing it's that crazy. Work. It's craziness. I just don't understand why we are we have put ourselves in this position. 
Um, so. But it, it, it's going to linger. It's going to be there. The effects are going to be there. We can't ignore it. Um, and so, something has got to be done. We because should all keep in touch and, you know, just email each other throughout the years, see how it's going <laughs> ten years from now. Well, watch this and be like, so who was right about <laughs> Who was right about No, because I will be that person. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, should we move on to what? Do you, to, yeah. something? do you want to talk about Bitcoin? Yeah, Bit- let's what? give Rami. Let's tone it down a bit, talk about Bitcoin. <laughs> Go on, Rami. Something that oh, right, yeah. also is, none of us understand. Let's get it out. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm just going to talk about regulation really, I think, uh, because I think it's an easy enough topic to discuss uh, the issues surrounding regulation. Uh, Countries are coming out and saying that they're looking to um, uh, examine ways in which they can regulate Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Uh, A couple of countries have outright banned cryptocurrency. Um, I think, I I just thought it would so. you know, one we could just talk about, you know, the regulation, is it something that we can see in the future? Is it something that's a viable option? Do you think that there should be regulation on? 100%, yeah. What are the impacts? Because you want to explain the impacts of the regulation? Because I don't think, uh, the biggest, the biggest, the biggest benefit of having a digital currency, right, is that it's, you know, obviously you might have to have paper and things like that, but also it's quick. It's relatively secure. Um, it's easy to use. It's a brilliant system. You know, you can send a million dollars to India for barely anything, and transaction fees are tiny. It's it's quick to send, but you have a lot of other issues with something not being uh, regulated like that. And I think the biggest issue is if people want it to see it adopted on a mass scale, which people want. You know, they want to be able to go to a coffee shop. And pay for their skinny latte or whatever <laughs> these people are drinking nowadays with you know yeah, bitcoin or like that was a jab at jack quite sad <laughs> 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 oh, it, it looks like you were kind of like near jack <laughs> black americano only um you know or do they though do they really want to pay with bitcoin i don't know anyone who uses bitcoin you're uh, the only person i know who talks about it I, I think a lot of people do because i can see the appeal of people wanting to use it because it's so easy it's like contactless you know but we've got contactless it's already built into the system i just don't see what's the, the point of it if you're just going to regulate it like it's normal currency but I think my argument is that if you want, if people want it to be used as a currency like the dollar or whatever, it needs to be regulated. It needs to be regulated yeah. to stabilize yeah, it yeah, because yeah, you, you cannot, no coffee shop owner is going to want to take something in a form of payment that could be worth 30% less yeah. in a week's time. That is the single most issue. And also, you have issues with money laundering, with crime, with, you know. Yeah. Uh, drugs and uh, the black market kind of side of things i don't think if people want it to be commercially viable mass adopted it needs to be regulated it needs to be centralized in a way i think i think you cannot have a system like that that is not regulated i agree because it's going to be like you're going to have you're going to go into shops and it's going to be dual payment options of which currency you want to pay it in so what's the point and from the article that you put on the, the google doc isn't it like some states have tried sort of regulating bits and pieces, but obviously it's a bit of a patchwork it, where it's, a, it's not an international. Yeah, it's impossible to do at the end of the day. You know, yeah. you can wire money all around the world and leave barely any trace of evidence and do it extremely cheap and do it yeah. extremely quickly. You know, somebody kind of the appeal of it. Though, exactly. But that leaves like it to be abused. Regulation. It leaves yeah. it to be abused. You know, no regulation kills crypto. Yeah. So I, I can see it, I think it's a brilliant system, the fact that you can move money like that quickly, securely, um, and cheaply. I think it's a brilliant Only system. Only so you can do your shady business deals. <laughs> But I mean, how, how, how quickly are we talking about it? Because you oh. can like, like transfer money from one country to another in, what, two days, three days? Yeah, but, but, but that's the thing. Three days in, in the grand scheme of things nowadays is a long, long time. With these cryptocurrencies, something like Ripple, you know, it can be done in seconds. That's the thing. And, and if you look at it on a macro example with businesses trading and things like that, for businesses to be able to wire money in, in transfers and things like that, it's, it's a big, you know, it's a big deal. Um, to be able to, to have money moving freely, I think. So you've can, got can I, business not do that now? Because I'm, I'm only talking about like on a, a public scale. So I can sure. send money to a Japanese bank account. It takes like two days. It, for businesses, so like, it will still take a long time. Yeah, it's yeah. still going to take time. Um, you know, it's like if you put a check in 
in the bank. That's still going to take a couple of days, a week to clear. Um, that is why people see the appeal in it because it is so quick and it's so cheap. So but, um, the regulation would now would be sort of a test to see if it holds up to. I I think because you were talking about would regulation yeah, kill cryptocurrency it then, if it if it did well, probably because if you then regulate it they're probably going to put in things like it's going to take a few days yeah. to clear your money then it's yeah, not going to be that, was, that is a yeah. test to, yeah, it, to see difficult. whether it will I hold think up I, as I can't, a viable option for businesses to use or whatever in the future I can't see many existing coins being used for mass adoption possibly Ripple but I think if you want a, a worldwide coin I think it needs to be one that is created by a bank or a government and is regulated and centralized. I, yeah. I cannot see it being adopted on a mass scale in any other way. Yeah. And the issue is, is obviously with fiat currency, you have central reserves, right? The Federal Reserve in America, if they need more money, they can just print a couple of billions just like that. <laughs> <You> <laughs> I don't think that's quite how We run to the Federal Reserve. <laughs> but they do. They can, but they yeah. do. Look at um, monetary policy, you know, they can control interest rates. Mm -hmm. You have quantitative easing is where they basically just inject a load of money into banks to boost the supply and circulation of currency in an economy. They, every year, America prints billions of dollars to pump into the economy. That's why the dollar has lost so much value over its lifetime because, because it's the obviously the supply the of money has increased a massive yeah. amount. Whereas 100 years ago, you could quite easily have your money in your bank and save and save and retire quite nicely. Nowadays, they're pumping out such a high amount that it degrades the value of the currency so much. Bitcoin obviously does do the same, but there is a limit, there is a max limit, which then puts an actual value, so to speak, on it because it is, it is obviously limited. Yeah. I think I could see a cryptocurrency working on a mass scale, but I think it would need to be very similar to a some sort of central reserve system where it could be manipulated. I, I don't know, it, it's difficult, but I can't see it being adopted with, with the issues surrounding it at the moment. Yeah, it's just a little bit too rogue at the moment, I think. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't use it if there was I just don't, think, I just don't think there's it. enough people. The average everyday person, I just don't think, wants another app, another bank account that they're going to have to use. That's from our position. Yeah. But that doesn't, like, that, it doesn't bother me from that perspective. US is cool on it. That there are a lot of people who do use and it. And in different circles. Like, yeah. Like whoever Rami hangs out with. <laughs> but do you have Bitcoin? Um, do you have any? Yeah, yeah I do. I do. <laughs> and I know a lot of people online that, um, that <laughs> it sound dodgy, no? You're making it sound dodgy. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the whole, yeah, because right. it's really it's not dodgy. I was going to say, the whole concept is it's quite dodgy. The but cryptocurrency technically is in the dodge ball. Right? <laughs> it's got a little... <laughs> <laughs> Don't nervous laugh. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to dig you out here. I, I, know, I know a lot of people online that do business online. <laughs> Not helping. In, in legal ways, you know, for, for, just <laughs> for digital marketing purposes, content, social media, yeah. all of that stuff, content writing and things, and, and uh, link building, all that kind of boring stuff. But they take um, payments in cryptocurrency. Yeah, because people it's quick live and a lot easy. of their lives online. See yeah, being, like, I know a lot of people who, who, who do find it useful because it is so quick, mm -hmm. um, and it's and it's you know it's but quick, it's cheap. Putting it in the hands of the state in order to regulate that would kind of turn a lot like of people off. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it would, but I it, but it's a double edged sword. If you want it mass adopted, I don't think mm. it can continue like it is because I mean look at Bitcoin last year. It went from what six thousand dollars a year ago to. Twenty thousand yeah. dollars in December. What's it on the rash again? That, I was no, say it's, it's about five. Now, it's yeah. about six, seven thousand now. And it could just spike up again. Yeah. It could go to a, yeah. a million. Who? Yeah. That, that's the issue. There is no yeah. tangible yeah. value to it. So yeah. it's at least with currency. You know, you have currency trading in pairs and things like that. Countries hold federal uh, foreign reserves of different currency, and they can manipulate that supply and demand. But at least there is some sort of. Um, there isn't really a value to dollar since it got decayed yeah. from the uh, from the uh, from the gold, gold standard, standard. But people trust the dollar. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. they trust that the government is yeah. using it wisely. So arguably, so to speak. it's maybe not even a government or a state that is needed. It's just more trust. Yeah. You see, like a giant global corporation, Facebook, for instance. Now Nick Clegg's in involved. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. Could you see a, a nice corporation? Because like a lot of there's a lot of talk about the nation state being an obsolete form of governance. Well, I was, that was yeah. going to be my next question. Was um, yeah. 
I, I think so. I, I think that we are moving to a system where big corporations now are becoming a massive, massive strategic partner in, in the worldwide economy. It's all bullshit. And it's I know I agree with you. It's kind of, um, it's kind of great in a way. Um, but, but we're seeing mass adoption from some of these big companies. But I think if you look at it from an economic point of view, it could be it could be a massive... I'm not it, 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 it could be a massive benefit because if you look at the the time and the money spent on moving money around the world, it, it costs billions, <laughs> billions of dollars to convert and, and send money all around the world. For businesses that operate Making countries dollars. all over the world, possibly, yeah. Well, you'd need people to do it, yeah. Businesses that operate all over the world and need to move vast amounts of money around the world, it takes them time now. But if they have a system that enables them to move money cheaper all around the world, surely it's going to be a, a good, viable option. So I can see the appeal to it from, yeah. from these big companies. Are we going to skip over the whole what? super governance by... Well, I think you, you're going to be you're going to be blabbering off for hours <laughs> about. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah. so we disagree. We disagree about a lot of things, but yeah, I agree with you. It won't matter. Well, I don't know. I think it's just Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Obviously, I don't think being ruled by like a a global a faceless corporation is great, but I just think it's interesting how much civil society has sort of, you know, surged in the last you know forty fifty years, yeah. and how even like you can look at. CEOs of companies and stuff, and think of them as like you know lizard people or just uh, they definitely are egomaniacs. Which yeah, arguably you know you could argue that, but but they they're a self-made sort of person. They do have a lot of influence. Now, who's some now yeah built up yeah some of them too. But should, but yeah. they've built up an amount of influence. They've done like what Donald Trump claims to do, you know, in terms of being an outsider, taking an outside route. Which is not true, really, what, is it? Yeah. It's not, he wasn't really an outsider. No, not really. He always, Neither are a lot of people had, there in really yeah. massive yeah. positions of multi-billionaires. Yeah. Yeah. And to be fair, yeah, Mark Zuckerberg wants to politic with him, which is pretty horrendous. Is that why he's because hired Nick Clegg? Because he wants an A. He's, well, he's, he's got other people from like, the, the Lib Dem, yeah. other parties. A couple of his he's friends, his, yeah. He's such a terrible orator, though, for Mark Zuckerberg. Was it maybe he's getting Clegg to like coach him on his speeches. Was it his sips? In the Senate. Oh, oh in the Senate. It, the, the he looked weird. like a robot, wasn't yeah, it? That's yeah. the argument. But he looks yeah. like a robot when you I can imagine him being a politician, like looking like a robot. I don't, I don't, I don't think he he's got the charisma. No, he hasn't got it, has he? You know, he's, he's too, too he's intelligent. Too, I know yeah, but actual joke about charisma and, and politicians' charisma are two different things. No, I agree. He hasn't learned how to perform like other basic human functions. Yeah, basic human interactions. Because there's loads of videos of him in that uh, Senate, or uh, was it a committee or yeah, something? Yeah, it's a Senate And he, he just looks terrible, doesn't he? What about he? the clip look. when he's like, if I was human? <laughs> I mean, I am human. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's very damning. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty damning evidence there. Um, yeah, but I, I think it good. leads on to a good point. We're talking about Facebook. Obviously, if you read in the news, um, Facebook has hired Nick Clegg as their global, uh, as their head of global affairs and communications. Former leader of the Lib He's out. He's out of the political scene. He's Nick out Clegg, of the finally. political scene. Yeah. How do they, these politicians, all of them, find themselves after fucking up so badly? David Cameron, Nick Clegg, Tony Blair. Mm. They, they land a cushy job. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous, isn't it? And we, we all just go, yeah. Oh well. I bet. It. I, I bet. hate it. We're so retracted from. I, I bet May won't though. I bet yeah, after yeah. May's premiership ends, we'll never hear from her again. Yeah, but I she's kind she'll of she'll just run off into the woods. She's kind of no, through the woods. fields of wheat. Yeah. 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 You know, she, uh, <laughs> do what I want now. Sarah and McDonald's, you never know, head of oh, head of global strategy. Oh, I thought you should see her in your local McDonald's. Customer, we chowing down on a Big Mac. I thought you went behind the counter. No, she can't afford the pound saved meal. I don't know. We we need to start holding these people to account more as like a society and not allowing them to... What is Clegg going to do at Facebook? What, he's head of... He's a lobbyist. He's <laughs> <It's> a lobbyist. <laughs> I, I, I put down... Yeah. yeah, he is he's a lobbyist. He's head lobbyist. Yeah, he's a lobbyist. I yeah. put down here, the role entails global affairs and communication, privacy, fake news and election meddling, which makes it sound like Nick Clegg is going to be yeah, doing election meddling and fake news. Well, Facebook does that. So um, yeah, right, so... But I think he's been hired to kind of clean up Facebook's image. Yeah. 
yeah, a little okay. bit. Which ain't gonna work, is it? It's a bit of a weird choice. Maybe like in other countries they'll be like, oh, he looks, you know, sounds Credible. not threatening. <laughs> Nick Clegg, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. we, we all know him as David Cameron's bitch, which yeah. is exactly what I was saying. Yeah. The guy who fucked up student loans. I was student sad loans. when he lost his seat in 2017, but you know. He deserved it. Yeah, yeah, he did. He totally like, deserved it. And he shouldn't have been given a job in like a company like that to clean up scandalous. Mm. <laughs> I, th- I think like, it shows back. how fucked Facebook are if they've hired Nick Clegg. That's a good idea. one of the should we check his CV? No. One of the articles I looked at, it was like, the headline was like, why has Facebook chosen Nick Clegg? And more importantly, why is he accepted? Yeah. Like, maybe they think each one's bad reputation is going to cancel the other out. Well, as you said, they're friends, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, yeah he's got friends. He's got Lib Dem friends. He's saying Mark Zuckerberg's big in the Lib Dem community. Didn't know that. I, um, I think it's, uh, I think it's really str- oh, I can't remember what I was going to say. Good broadcast um, material. <laughs> no, I, was, I, I said something to you in ah oh, after um, ripping into Facebook so much about them not paying their taxes mm. and about them being like a really unethical mm. company. Mm. He's now gone and taken a Dude, massive even, paying even job. Even he with said, them. even he yeah. said it was like what, what did he say? The what was the words that he used? He used a word to describe Facebook, and it was really pejorative, saying like they're yeah. really crap. Basically, he said about how he hates the whole new world, oh, like the, Cali intellectuals. Yeah. Sort of thing. yeah. What did he say? He said something quite cutting about them. So does he think he's going to join them? Yeah. Yeah. Does he think he's going to join them and reform them? Is that what he thinks? Oh, I don't know. No, I think he he thinks, oh, I can move to California. California, live on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice Malibu beach. Finally escape everyone making fun of me. Yeah. Well, to be honest, maybe now he thinks he can actually finally influence politics. Yeah. Basically. Head election meddler. Yeah. He probably is going to have, you know. More, be more influence. Cyclone, so it's probably more than when he was deputy. Yeah. You think student fees are big now? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, he shifted. I, I can't remember um, how long he. Uh, I read about this, but um, he he is shifting his opinion now, and saying that Facebook's tax issues are maybe more of a government issue now. Now that's his opinion. That uh, the government issues should be to collect so he's he's nicely kind it of be, yeah, the, the owners should be on <laughs> the corporations to pay their taxes it should be on the government, government to, to collect, tell them off to collect to pay their them. taxes that is fucking ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> coming from Nick Clegg I don't know I do kind of see the point like if they're not under any legal obligation to pay tax they are but, but, but they're not doing it. But they're paying the tax. About it? They're paying. They're, they're paying. Sure they pay as little as yeah, they are yeah, they're they're paying paying Which is the minimum required. Oh yeah, no, they're paying, tax reform. <laughs> no, yeah, we're not getting into that. But they're paying the minimum. The minimum they're required yeah. to do. And they're allowed to get away with it. Yeah. So yeah, it should be on governments. It should be on the governments to actually sort their shit out and actually step step up. I don't disagree. Not allowed. I don't disagree. Not allowed to get away. An ethical company would pay. Yeah. 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 For why? Ethical company. An ethical company. I'll just go. They're not ethical. Don't worry about it. No, no. I'm calling them both out. The government is shit at collecting taxes. Corporations are shit at paying taxes. I agree. They're both in the wrong. I completely agree. It's like an ethical individual would pay taxes, but there's still unethical people who are forced to pay their taxes. Yeah. What person likes paying income tax? No one likes paying exactly. tax at all, but if they I don't d- have to, and they're not I being told the off, they're going to keep I doing it, aren't they? They're well, just going to. We could just move to Barbados or something. Just all of us. Yeah. 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 Just pay no tax. Very there we go. Can we, can we, can have we our do our the room? podcast on a beach? I'm probably going to be paying that much tax anyway. <laughs> I know you're planning to be like it. Remy's right? not going to pay any tax. <laughs> yeah, Remy is one of these like scummy individuals. He's one of the people who's going to not pay tax. I have a shell company in the Bermuda. Well, we can do. Be under the threshold. We, we can we can do we can do the podcast on a beach. We're going to be just like sipping margaritas. Yeah, I'm not moving to fucking Barbados <laughs> just to do a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> just so you don't have to pay tax. <laughs> yeah. We're not we're not that invested. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I don't know, this opens up a lot of avenues yeah. for conversation. And it's I just definitely one he's, he said, what did he say? It's a wrench to be leaving the Brexit debate at this point. Oh, yeah, he's Fuck glad off. to be yeah, leaving. Yeah, I bet he's, uh, he's loving it. Just yeah. like I'll be glad to finish this so we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I just, well, we're going to be talking about it next week as well. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the week after that. Yeah. The week after that. <laughs> yeah. So get used to it. But I think, I think if, if he'd done a good job as a coalition kind of like deputy, I, I could see it, you know. I think he would have had the support from the millennials, and I think it yeah, could have been a good yeah. synergy. He from could Facebook. have been a real centrist hero. Mm. If they did a good job, <laughs> if they did a good <laughs> job in the coalition, that. then he wouldn't have to be. Well, that's true. He would yeah, he'd still have a job. He'd yeah. yeah. probably be in still politics yeah. in an important role now, wouldn't he? Yeah, mm. and it would be Vince Cable, who did a really good speech at the uh, People's March, by the way. He looks like Yoda. 
That's that's the only opinion I really okay. have of it. No, does he, he looks look like, like Yoda? He looks like that guy who hangs around outside yes, Den Sharma smoking. Yes, always smoking. I don't know if you guys know about that. That's a bit broad. See, I mean, that could be anyone. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a guy who wears a coat. This is not going to be well, helpful to anyone really who watches this podcast. <laughs> there's a guy who hangs, old guy, who Total looks intro. almost identical to Vince Cable, who just stands outside uh, Dennis Sharma Cafe, he's always there. and he smokes about ten fags like within an hour. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of an exaggeration. He's he 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 chain smokes. He must. I don't know if he's a teacher. I don't know what he does. He's involved in something around nearby, and he just is there every single time we go past. Why Dennis Dennis whatever it is, he lives a very what? stressful life. Yeah. yeah. Why don't they just make longer cigarettes? They know people are going to chase <laughs> someone. <laughs> 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 well, how are you going to fit in your pocket, right? Yeah. You've got to have it in your right side. You're going to right right have a mount, a mount, like a shoulder mount, to keep it, like, not popping down. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> because if it's going to be like that, it's, it's going to be thick as well, is it? It's going to be really like the size of a little I'm going to edit it. I am going to edit that scene. I'm going to edit that. It's going to be like Louise's brother. Can you edit a massive cock into this? Come on. And on that note. Yeah, I think we should we should wrap it up. I think we've exhausted ourselves. Thank you very much for watching. Yeah, thanks. Cheers. We we yeah we we've been drinking Remy's whiskey. I've been I've been drinking. No one's touched it. I've dropped most of mine. I'm enjoying. I'm savouring. I like it, but after a while it gets it's difficult. Yeah, you have to leave about half an hour between sips. Um, We're nice. going to be here a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for yeah. watching the first yeah. two episodes as well. I mean, we got almost 100 um, views on the first one in like two weeks. Oh, really? so yeah, we've been doing really well. Yeah, we're really grateful for all of yeah, the support. Been, yeah, keep good. watching. Keep Comment, and tell us what you want to see, Comment, what you want to see like us subscribe. talking about. Please, not much more Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Bye. Bye.